I just paid 20 bucks for everything that's in this box from a sale. One single item out of this box is going to pay for every single thing in here. Hey, it's done. Today we're going to look at some items I purchased at a sale. Now this was the last day, which is usually what I wait. Most of this stuff was just left there. There's some records on the bottom of this box. So I got some records, a few specialty baseball cards, and a whole bunch of postcards, all for 20 bucks. Leftovers for the most part. Most people, who knows if they even looked at them all, honesty. But one single item out of here is going to pay for everything. And not only that, I've got a ton of items in here that will sell for some decent money all on their own. Now, I've taken out the postcards so you can see how many records were in here as well. Now, most of these records aren't going to be worth a fortune, but there's at least 20 records in here that I should be able to get 10 bucks or better out of. There's another 8 or 10 that I should get 30, 40, or 50 bucks out of. Some of them are decent, all original pressings like this Moon Glows here. 20, 24 bucks, pretty easy to get out of this. Again, I paid 20 bucks for the whole entire purchase. I'm constantly asked, how can you get the items so cheap that you have little to nothing into them? I buy them like this. Other people pass them by. There's no uh, sleeves on them or anything like that. And most people assume with scratches and things, they're probably not worth much money. But this one right here, like the Moon Glows on an original first pressing of chess, 20, 24 bucks on average. Again, you don't have to just sell these on eBay. Records sell extremely well on Discogs. Uh, even on Amazon, eBay, of course. So if I can't sell them on one or the prices are different on one site versus another, I go and sell them wherever it's worth the most amount of money. Now this is Frankie and the Classics. This is like a $30 disc right here. Now some of these may need some cleaning. I have a cleaner for it as well. Here's an interesting one. This is a really early Sunny and Share on a vault label. This one's worth $15, $20, all the way up to $30, bucks, depending on how I market and push something like this spring fever it's an early one uh, it's not one of the ones that probably anybody has ever heard of they actually went under different names prior to that also so knowing a little bit about uh, the performers themselves is always good now this is Garnet Mims there's some by Garnet Mims that can go for four five hundred dollars or better this one here is about ten bucks twelve bucks again you got to think about what I paid for it all twenty bucks we're just looking at a few records I could pull through here and throw some up on Discogs and probably get a few hundred bucks fairly easily if I price them aggressively on there. So, uh, and now here's Barbara Lewis, Think a Little Sugar. This one's 15, 20 bucks on the good day of the week. So again, just one or two items on these sorts of purchases pay for everything. So when I start the list, I usually list some of the higher dollar items first. That way I get all of my money back. And from that point going forward, anything that sells from that is pretty much profit, less eBay fees on it. Now, again, I just pulled some out of this box. There's a whole bunch of decent ones in here. There's probably $400 or better just in this box of records. Again, you've got to be able to market them, got to know where to put them, knowing the good ones, obviously, knowing which ones you can sell pretty readily, knowing a, a price off the top of your head is really going to be a plus. But if you take the time and invest into it, this is something you can do as well. Now, I also got this big stack of postcards right here. Now, there's another stack of about 40. I pulled a few out of here to show you what I got in here. Again, Again, 20 bucks for the entire lot here. Last day of a sale. Most of these look like junkers. I don't know. Maybe the way they were thrown together, no one decided to dig through them or they weren't interested. So let's just show you some interesting postcards here. I mean, these are just fabulous cards. This is a gel faced card. It's actually coated with like a clear coat on the outside. It's just as spectacular. It might not show off very well in the video here, but this is a really nice card here. I should get 10, 15 bucks easily for that one there. Um, knowing enough as you go through them, you're gonna be able to do extremely well on them. This is a really nice, almost Art Nouveau, and that's what I'm going to list in the title on this one here. A good easy 10 bucks as well. These are quick to list, quick to get up, quick to ship, quick to everything. 
They take up little space. This is just the stack I pulled off. All of these will get me at least 10 bucks. I don't list anything that's less than 10 bucks in this category here. Marketing them, titling them, good uh, SEO keywords will get you some good money. Again, if I sell one record, every postcard I'm showing you is free. Every one I've got for nothing. It's these junk lots. They don't look like much to somebody. They'll just scan through it and go, eh, there's not much there. This is another gel. Hopefully you can see the mega reflection on this one here. It's just a spectacular card. It's a night image, nice Christmas, bordered. It's unusual because it's old, but yet it's got a more modernized style to it. Really nice one. Again, 10 bucks minimum on any of these. Now, some of these, like this chick set here, I'll probably put, say, $24.50 on it and just take what I can get. I will at least get 10 bucks again. One other area that I mess with, which many other people don't, I sell the religious stuff constantly. And this is a gel, and it's Dresden. You can see the Dresden gilt on top of the gel. If it wasn't a gel, it probably wouldn't be worth as much. But I'm going to put, say, $17.50 on this one here. It's just a spectacular lilies, cross, Easter. The rays in the background are, are what I think is going to be a big draw. Now, I sell Valentine all the time, Valentine's Day cards. The heart border up on the top uh, reminds me of, say, a Halloween one. This is a winch back as well. So winches go for some decent money. I can list that in the title, and this one should sell fairly well for me. $14.50 will probably be my bottom end on this one here. Probably listed for $19.99, $24.50, somewhere in that range. I don't care if it sits for a while. Many people will be scared off about listing some stuff that sits for a while. If you don't pay anything for the items when you purchase them, who cares if they sit? If you've got enough free listings, it's not going to cost you an extra dime at all. So I'll list the stack of these right here, and I'm surely going to sell enough to make a really good profit, a couple hundred bucks, and that's just with listing this stack, and the rest sit. If I list a couple hundred more, who cares? It only takes moments. In one minute, I can scan like 30 postcards, both sides, all at once, with a DS510 duplex scanner. It's an Epson. There's a, a bunch of them as well. But even the turkey ones, which most people tend not to mess with, I do extremely well with these fancy ones like this. It's got some silver Dresden style to it, nice colors, everything I would want in it tennis or i guess maybe badminton or something like that i'm not really sure it looks more like a tennis court too but uh again cherubs excellent piece here of valentine's 1450 you tie in the sports related aspect to it it does extremely well i don't know how well this one will show off but candles in a christmas tree if you put candles christmas tree girl cute um victorian you're gonna sell these for 10 15 even 20 bucks uh, again, depending on the day of the week, literally. Memorial Day. Now, let's let this one get back in focus here. This is a spectacular ship, patriotic. Um, it's got a ton of stuff going for this one here. 15 20 bucks is what I'll probably put on it. I'll at least get 10 12 14 buck range easily, 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 easily. These are ones that a lot of people won't take the chance on. Uh, here's another spectacular one in my book. Uh, adorable um, baby Jesus manger um, Holly's Berry Christmas um, halo I mean it's a really nice card uh, just because of how cute it is I would imagine I'll put say 1999 and take whatever I can get now here's Stony Creek Bridge uh, some of these obviously I'll have to look up but I'm going to give a shot to everyone you see here now these are some of the other ones that I've actually pulled out of the lot here uh, just to give you an idea, I'm sure some folks may recognize some of the locations, but I've got depots. Uh, there's some real nice ones in here, in all honesty. Here's Southern Pines North Carolina Country Club, and this one's hand-colored. Let's see if we can get it in focus there. And this one's hand-colored. Uh, it's a nice early one, but still, hand-colored ones in general, I usually put $17.50 or better on them. I sell them extremely well. Let's see what else we got in here. Uh, cabins, Bar Harbor, Maine, uh, and these are some cabins up there. Cabins and getaways and things like that I sell extremely well also. Now there's a few West Virginia ones in here which I've talked about in my Patreon group. You should know which ones I'm talking about. I picked up a couple of those in this lot. In all honesty, with the postcards in here and just a couple of the postcards, this $20 purchase I could easily get back a thousand bucks. 
This is an exaggeration figure. If you start to price one by one hundreds of items here that I've got, it'll add up fairly quickly, especially when some of these can go for a heck of a lot of money. Um, I mean, like with the postcards here, some of these might be 20 and $30 a piece. I've got train depots. I've got uh, factories at night, uh, early dams and fishing and some small towns. These all date to around 1900, 1910, I think is the latest one. Cow Creek Canyon, Oregon, Southern Pacific Passenger Train. This is an interesting one. Now, most of these train shots I get, again, at least 10 bucks on. I've pulled out the better ones just so I know value-wise I can get some chunk out of it right off the bat. As I said, I'm going to list these stacks right here. This is all from that first stack. I'm going to list these first. I'll have somebody scan them here. I'll throw some prices on them and have them list them up. I will get my money back easily the first day and already have a profit probably within just a few hours of listing these. Now postcards are always good for us. Obviously there's more and more people selling them but if you know the difference you know where to sell them. Again postcards can also sell on many different sites. I sell postcards on eBay Amazon, you've got Etsy, and we also cross list them to hip postcards. I've got a link actually down in there for three free months for anybody who may be interested, but they automatically sync up through eBay. I don't do much anything like that unless it syncs up. It's time, time consideration. Another reason these are usually cheap in big lots like this. First, people won't want to spend the time. Time is always a factor. Most people want the quick, easy money on stuff. This can be quick and easy money as well as provide you with passive income. Right here, there's probably around 300 plus listings worth of stuff for 20 bucks. Now that's 300 plus worth of listings that are actually worth listing. If they're not worth listing, they'll get junked into a lot and sold that way. Or I'll take them to an auction and have them dumped off locally with some other records that I have and I need to get rid of or postcards or whatever the case may be. So if you can break something down like this, list the ones that are worth money quickly, get your money back, make a profit, the rest of it's gravy. You can list the high dollar ones and then lot them up if you wish as well. A thousand postcards on eBay, you can usually get at least 75 bucks for. So if I can buy a thousand postcards or so, which is probably close to what's here for 20 bucks or less, I can sell them and instantly make 40 or 50 bucks just on selling these as I found them. But if you spend a little bit of time investing into this area, investing into what's important, what's valuable, you will pick it up. It's something that you can do as well. A lot of these even I've got some uh, real photo, real picture postcards in here of some interesting spots. Uh, here's some petrified trees in California at a park. These date to around 1910, pretty much everything in here. Again, there's a lot of money in these sorts of things. Uh, these train ones almost always go for some good money. Borders with seashells go for some good money. You can sell just the ones with seashells to collectors as well. Now, they're not worth a ton of money, but they're still not very common. They can get you some decent money. Excellent condition ones. Again, I just pulled out some that I know I can sell for at least 10 bucks. I've been selling postcards for 25 years or better. I've learned which ones are expensive, which ones aren't. I can pretty much dig through a huge lot and just pick out the good ones I don't again mess with cheap ones now I also got a small stack of sport flicks thrown in as well now these are lenticular baseball cards that were sold in 1986 now they go back farther than that I've had them from Kellogg's just about the same as these uh, inserted in cereal from like 70s and stuff and even going back a little farther than that now, you may not think a whole bunch about these because they're not your standard baseball card, but some of these graded are going for thousands and thousands of dollars if you get the right person, like Bo Jackson or someone like that. Um, I don't have the best players in here, but still, I always nab these up because you never know which ones. This is Chris Brown. This is Fernando Venezuela on this one here. Some of these have multiple images 
with showing like multiple players. This is like a triple one. You can see a close up of him, an action shot, uh, a second action shot. So these do extremely well. Again, they're not worth a fortune, but I got them all thrown into here. So even if I just list this little stack here, it's paying for everything. I can get 20 bucks easily out of this lot here if I'm not in a rush to sell them. Now what this also does is help you get passive income. I can list 40 or so of these cards in an hour on eBay very easily. I've got videos showing me do exactly that. So it's not some fantasy or fiction on these. Most other items you can't list that many that quickly. Records I can do even quicker than that if I want to list them on Discogs because I don't have to take a picture. You can list records just like this without taking a picture because it's the standard version of the record. Everybody knows what it looks like. All you got to do is describe the condition itself, maybe any label issues that may be there. But it's a very viable means, very big way to sell things. It's probably six times bigger than eBay for sellers of records. There's six times the quantity of records up, usually on Discogs versus eBay, most of the time when I'm looking. So it's just another area, another thing you can sell. So for all of those who ask and wonder, how the heck can you get this kind of stuff for almost nothing, this is it. This is how I do it, in big bulk lots. It's easy enough once you've been around the block, once you've figured out where to get this stuff, which estate sales are best, which local live auctions, and that sort of thing. Some of our best garage sale picks have been records in the past. I've made more on 45s as well than I ever have on LPs. 45s I've sold for thousands of dollars for one single disc. A thousand bucks plus is nothing for a good Northern Soul record. So again, you can get records down to a nickel, a penny a piece if you hunt around for them. It only takes somebody missing one single record or a couple records or them not knowing a certain area of records for you to make some good money off those big lots. On eBay, I can sell 100 soul records for at least 30 bucks easily pretty much any day of the week. And I may get 100 bucks or better for some decent lots like out of something like this pick that I got here. Probably 75% of this box is Northern Soul. If you don't know what that is, look it up and look at the values. Sort by highest to lowest on completed listings on eBay for the word Northern Soul in the record category section. We, as I said, have sold records that have sold for $4,000 for one single 45 right out the door. Never have a return on them. Most of them do go overseas. Never had an issue with that either, but this is how you do it. This is the way to get inventory all at once, to get decent inventory, get valuable inventory, an inventory that you can flip for thousands of dollars off of just a really small, cheap purchase. Now, this lot should make us at least a thousand bucks take home after everything is said and done because of the value of the records and stuff. That's after labor. It doesn't take much to list any of these items. So just think about the $20 initial cost and what you could do with all of this stuff for 20 bucks. But anyway, that's what I have for you today. Hopefully, that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. Plus, now there's also a new mounds with creamy rich milk chocolate.